What is good guys, guys, and everybody else? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to House of Case, your boy Fuller, and we're back with another League of Legends related reaction. I know it's been a minute, my bad. Um, <laughs> but we're back with uh, this reaction here. Uh, somebody requested this one. It's called um, Law of Legends of Renatella. So uh, it's also by Nakri. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty interested to see where, where this goes, what this is about. Um, to learn more about, you know, the story of Renatella best. Runtella. <laughs> I always do this. I always say Runtella or something like that, but it's Runtella. My bad. My bad. My bad. Um. <clears throat> so yeah. Anyways, I do not know what to expect uh, when it comes to this video. So I'm not gonna say much because <laughs> I don't know what to say. But anyways, uh, let's just get into this. I hope you enjoy this reaction. If you do, please leave a like. Sub to the channel and leave a comment down below telling me what your thoughts were on this video. And if you have not watched the original video, please do go and check out the original. I will put the link in the uh, description below. So yeah, let go. Oh, and um, I forgot who requested a video for... Um, what's the title? Um, Ionia Still Stands by Shambits Gaming. Yeah, yeah. So I will do that. I will try to... Post that one tomorrow. I remember, I know I said today, but you know, yeah, tomorrow, fam. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to a video that everyone's been waiting for. I, go. I know I just released an hour-long video that was fully edited, and it I remember this. Time, Where was it from? But hey, it's Stargo, so you should expect a lot of new lore reveals today. As always, every time Legends of Runeterra releases something new, it is always an amazing new addition to the lore of League of Legends. And Targon is definitely no exception. Mm. However, given how the Targonian cards work, and how with the new invoke mechanic, you can summon Celestials, which are not actually shown here among Ooh. the cards. These Celestials? are hidden cards that you can only find during the game. This means that in total, Targon has a lot of new cards. That must be broken, fam. Like, to have Celestials? <laughs> Yo. To be able to summon Celestials, that, that sounds insane to me. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not that broken. I don't know. But let's see. Let's see. Maybe you explain. And so, I will try to go through them a little bit quicker. Although, you know me. Every time I say that, the video is going to be at least 30 minutes long. So, without <laughs> further ado, let's have a look Can't at all the new lore that Argonian cards reveal. Starting with Diana. Both Diana and Leona have one really cool description and one I remember that's not her. that cool. The uncool description is the one before you level up. Here, the description just explains how the Lunari love their leader. Nothing special here. Although, I just quickly want to point out that right here at the bottom right, you can find not Night Bloom, which is the flower that Aphelios is turning into a poison, but this is a dust petal. And it's a very fragile flower that turns into a dust when you touch it. But Ooh. then we have the leveled up version, and this one has a really cool easter egg. The description says, Diana raced down the mountain, sword drawn and coated with dust petal dust. She knew Leona would find her, she was counting on it. Her heart fluttered with anxious anticipation, and she breathed deeply to still it. This time upon their meeting, she would have the upper hand. She would face her old friend head on. The reason why this card is really cool is because this is only one half of an encounter. Because if you look at the shadow on the floor, you can see that's Leona. The huh? last card Diana has is her pale <laughs> yeah, casket, which been is seen the that. shield she used in the cinematic too. But then we get to Leona. Just like Diana, she also has a description that just talks about how the Solari love her. However, here it is cool that it mentions how everyone in Leona's presence looks down. Which is a really cool reference to the fact that you are not supposed to look at the sun directly. I was just about to say that. This is what casts a shadow in Diana's card. So here you can see that the two are fighting. Leona's description says, This was what Leona had prepared for. She knew she would fight Diana fleeing down the mountain. She breathed deeply to still her fluttering heartbeat, willing it silent with grim resolve. This time upon their meeting, she had the upper hand. This time she would face her old friend head on. So as same, you can see, both thing. aspects think that they have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if this fight has any lore meaning. I wonder if this is actually happening, or if it happened. But right now, we simply don't know how this ends. Hmm. Leona also... Quick question. Um, I don't know if somebody explained this to me already, but... Why 
do these two nations like why are they against each other? I know there's the whole like moon and sun thing going on there, but then like what is their actual reason as to why they are against each other? And why is why are these two fighting? Or why do they fight? I don't know if this is just like one long ass fight or if it is like multiple fights for different reasons. I don't know. But if somebody knows the answer to that, please let me know. So as the cards for Morning Light, which just shows us the Solari Crest, and Solari Flare, which also doesn't really have any meaning. But then we get to Tarik, and Tarik is just full of Easter eggs. Okay, this First guy of all, is I quickly want to mention to that me. I love how the gems around him continue up the mountain, and they draw out a helpful path for those who would ascend the mountain. In oh. fact, the person we can see here in front of Tarik is Tiari the Traveler. Who has his own entire storyline hidden in the other car? Wait, I thought Tarik so was the dude remember in, in front. And right. just remember Wait, no. how Tarik is. Which guy is Tarik? The the dude, the big dude, right? That's what I'm guessing. In front of okay, yeah. So in front of meaning the dude he is facing, I guess. I... <laughs> Helping him ascend the mountain. The description says. Tarik's gentle kindness inspires all who meet him, galvanizing them to find the warmth within, to bolster themselves on even the coldest nights. Okay, his that's evolved pretty cool. version that okay, shows us Tarik at the peak of Mount Targo. As you'll see from the other cards, this is what the very peak of the mountain looks like. And here that the description looks, says, looks why should Tarik good. show his fellow man kindness? Well, he came to Targon a broken man, intent to climbing the mountain to atone for his sins. What succeeded. sins are those? Nobody knows better that all broken things can be made beautiful again. Mm. Because yes, this is a reference to Tarik's lore. In case you haven't seen it, we have recently updated it. So oh, this okay. card is a reference Guess to the fact that, that Tarik out. was once a Demacian. He failed in the military, a lot of people died because of him, and so the Demacians punished him by making him ascend Mount Targo. Oh. This kind of sen Wait, I think I've heard that story before. I'm pretty sure I've heard that story before. Was it? Did he mention it in like uh, maybe the the Law of League of Legends video? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I've heard that part before. I just did not remember that it's this dude. Since to death was known in the Masia as the Crown of Stone, and Tarik was one of the rare few who actually endured to the crown. Mm. And then there is Tarik's blessing of Targon, which simply says a little something from Targon, which is his in-game quote. And then there is Aurelian Soul, the star. Yeah. His descriptions are just a joke, but it's a good one. I don't care what you write about me, you middling creature. Just make sure I'm described as handsome and magnificent. <laughs> and also very, very intelligent. Can you spell that? That's and cool. And then when we have a look at the leveled up version, Aurelian Soul is handsome and magnificent and also very, very intelligent. Mm. Yes, they actually spelled it wrong. What is cool about this card <laughs> is that this one seems the to shade, give us the right. canon size of Aurelian Soul. Since we can see the aurora of the planet beneath, I assume that this is Mount Targon, because mm. this is supposed to be literally the only mountain that is reaching the heavens. So yeah, Aurelian, yeah. Aurelian is looks huge. dope as fuck. Though. But there is also <laughs> the Sky's Descent spell, which says, When the time comes, I think I'll make an example of Runeterra. Perhaps I'll drag its smoldering husk around with me for all eternity. Like a toy. A dead, worthless toy. Damn. I don't know. I have not Damn. really thought about it much. So what we can see in this art is probably Runeterra exploding. Damn. Which is curious because we can see two planets around it. I assume that one of them would be the moon. But I am not exactly sure what the other one would be. Mm. We know that technically Runeterra has two moons. But one is in the physical realm and the other one is in the spirit realm. Oh, okay. And they have and that I did not know at all. So that's what these could be. Then again, it could be just totally random planets. And now we are getting to all the follower cards. Starting with Gift The follower cards. They say the... Who are the follower cards? I don't know if he's going to explain it, but just curious. Because this is the first time I'm hearing that. Um, so yeah, if you know, let me know. Protector bless these gems. Wear them and he shall be with you in spirit. Here, try to remember these characters, because the guy at the back here is actually Tiari the Traveler, who will return a lot, and the people who are around him are his companions. And this card marks the beginning of their journey to ascend Mount Targo. Mm. And then there is a separate card for the gems, to which Tiari the Traveler says, you don't need to see to believe, just have a little faith. For the next one we have Lunari Dustbringer, 
who of course is surrounded by the dust pellets, which we have seen in Leona's car. And remember how Leona's description mentioned Yo, that the blade was covered if that's with a weapon? dust pellet dust? Well, but that dust looks pellets cool. bloom at night, and then only under a full moon, a proud symbol of the Lunari. We have used their dust for centuries, as only we know how to harvest them safely. So as you can see in this art, this Lunari is also using the dust pedal dust to enchant their weapon. And then there is also a separate card for the okay, dust pedal. Okay, that's cool. The fragrance of the dust pedal is like none other. Sweet and strange, but fleeting. It is delicate as moonlight itself. And then we get a tiny dip into the celestial cards. First of all, there is Messenger Sigil. Time passes, skies turn, the serpent moves aside, and the messenger takes its place overhead. The season of abundance awaits. So this card is just talking about the fact that there are certain star constellations that represent celestial characters. Oh, For example, okay. there is a constellation of the dog, and that one represents the messenger. The card also I was just about the serpent, this dude, we'll it later. I was just about to say, this dude looks like a dog. But I was like, maybe maybe I'm just not seeing things properly. <laughs> That's why I was quiet. I was like, wait, am I seeing this right? Am I seeing this right? Oh, I, I I was also starting to think like maybe it looks kind of like um, Professor Heimendinger. Uh, like the, fla I don't know what you call them, like the face. I thought like that, that could be like a mustache or something like that. So I was like, okay, maybe it's a Yodo or something. I don't know. That's what I was like. I was just quiet. I was, I was really trying to like, you know, see it properly. Here, in the other part of this card, we can actually see the messenger. Mm. We will talk about a lot of other celestials later on. So just to prepare you for what we are about to get into. Most of these celestials were created by Aurelian Soul. Mm, we okay. know this because of his in-game quotes. And this makes sense, because these beings are represented by their star constellations. And, of course, the stars, the stars were put into the sky by Aurelian mm. Soul. That's why he made them. And the description of this one says, as leaves unfurl from barren branches, the Lady of Spring sends her messenger to inform the Lord of Winter of the changing season. The messenger's bark startles the stars into new places in the sky, while his loyal heart warms the land. Essentially, what this is trying to say is that as seasons change, the stars in the sky change too. Which should be obvious because the planet is rotating. Because it's not flat. Hopefully. But more on Celestials later. Then there is Porofly. I talked about this many times before, we are technically not sure what Poros even are. We have never <laughs> seen a dead Poro, By the way, makes me wonder if I Poros can even the, die, the Poros and since videos. Poros are everywhere, including on the Shadow Isles... Actually, I made a video reacting to the po to the Poros, um, you know, lore, quote-unquote. Um, but I, I was just like, alright, I'm not sure if anybody wants to see this, so I just kept it. It's just they. But if you all want to see it, you know, I'll put it out there. Where they should actually die, and yet they don't, it really feels like Poros are indestructible. And yeah. so sure, I am not surprised that there is some kind of an the OP Poro. It simply says, in space, no one can hear you squeak. <laughs> and then we get the first Solari card. However, here, oh, if you look at the back, you can see a familiar character. This is the Lunari girl who escaped during the cinematic. Here we can see her while she was still in the Solari prison. Mm. But as to how she got here, that will be explained in another card. And then we get Spacey Sketcher. This is my favorite. I call it Metaphysical Identity of the Conscious Psych. Unless you tilt your head like this, then it kinda looks like two schools. Here she is talking about her space drawings. But things get slightly strange here. Based on her clothing, I would say that she is more of a Lunari than Solari. But then again, there are other Targonians who are not siding with either side. So maybe she is on the independent side. Mm -hmm. However, considering the fact that she is using a portal to move around, for a second I thought that she might be an ascended person. But that's probably not the truth. Because as you'll see later, there are other Targonians who can also use this kind of magic. And they were definitely not ascended either. Although, it would be really cool if this was revealed to be Maisha, the previous aspect of Twilight, who used portals very similar to Zoe. And then the there is The previous aspect of Twilight. I feel like I should know what that is, but I don't remember it. <laughs> My the bad. main character of the New West Cinematic. Ever since I saw one streak across the night sky, I've loved stellar corns. If only I had known then that I would meet so many. 
Of course, there is a reason why this person looks like Soraka. And that's because if you go back to Soraka's lore, that was updated quite a while ago, so it gives you an idea of how long Riot has been thinking about this. There it was revealed that after Soraka arrived on Runeterra, she moved to Targon, and there she started teaching the local Vastaya how to use celestial magic to heal people. However, we are not exactly sure if Soraka took on a form of these Vastaya, or if these Vastaya are trying to mimic Soraka. Mm, okay. Since the Celestials don't have a physical form until they arrive on Runeterra, which is something we learned from Bard's lore, this means that it is more likely that Soraka mimicked these Vastaya to fit in. Anyway, Makes we sense. will yeah, see more of I, this I can see that. later on. Then there is Behold the Infinite. Just remember this exact eye, because it will come back later. Then there is Guiding Touch, which is the goat person we just mentioned. It's a person? But then there is the Herald of Dragons. And this is how we start getting into the dragon lore. The clouds mm, twisted with their mocking forms and the sky itself seemed to shake with their keening wails. She knew what was to come, and yet felt no fear but the warm embrace of destiny. So of course here, what we can see in the background, are celestial dragons. They look cool, However, bro. I yeah. believe that there is a difference between a celestial dragon and a Targonian dragon. Because I do believe that these dragons specifically are the dragons of Twilight, that were mentioned in the older story called The Twilight of the Gods. Where, before the yeah. Ascended turned into the Darkin, they sometimes rode the dragons of Twilight to the beginning of time, and they witnessed the creation of the universe. That's the reason why I, I felt like I should remember who the, uh, the a what the aspect of Twilight was. Because I remember I watched the video of, you know, Twilight of the Gods, and he might have mentioned it in that video, I just don't remember it. I just don't remember it. And the Ascender did it just for fun. But technically, we have never really seen what these Twilight Dragons look like. So I assume it is one of these. As you'll see, there will be more dragons later. But since there are supposed to be many Dragons of Twilight, it should be the most common spacey dragons, which fits these. Before we move on to the next one, I just quickly want to mention that this person is actually mimicking Aurelian's soul. You can see they have a purple face, they have his teeth drawn on it, they also have the two golden horns that are part of his crown, which was made by the Targonians, and his long purple body. Mm. Then we have I was Lunari trying to remember what it looks like. And this card reveals Probably. how the Lunari girl got imprisoned. Let us cast our eyes towards the heavens, towards the sun, towards our ladies... Wait, what? What is that? Of course, those are the words of the Solari priest at the bottom, who mm. looked up and they saw the Lunari girl. <laughs> that's how they found her, and that's how she got in prison. Bam. And we have mountain girls. <laughs> I love these. But the description doesn't add anything to how cool these are. They look there is cool. Solari Shieldbreaker. And once again, here we can see the Lunari girl. Foolish not to come under cover of night. The Shieldbreaker straight. Lay down your arms and come peacefully. The Lunari crouched in silence readying her curved blades once more. So be it. The Solari readied herself in turn, lifting her shield to reflect the rays of rising sun. This makes me wonder when on the timeline is this happening? Is this happening before the Lunari girl is discovered? Or after that? Hmm. Does this mean that the Lunari girl is going to kill the shield bearer? But I assume Ooh. not. If you look at the background, you can see a Solari shrine here. With all the pillars and the open spaces, it looks very similar to the previous arc. So, so I think this, this is when she got discovered, yeah, she tried after. to run away, but because the night just ended and there was a daybreak, yeah. the Solari had the advantage, and that's how she, that's got, how she got caught. Anyway, right. then we have Starlord Stomper. Mm -hmm. The description is just mentioning how Zoe thinks this one is cute, which you will hear a lot from her in-game. The fuck is going on here? I your nose. I wish mine was like that. <gasps> what do stars smell like to you? <laughs> she has a lot of them. But I wonder what, what this creature is. Because yeah. technically, the card is not marked as a Celestial. Therefore, despite the appearance, I don't think this one was made by Aurelian Soul, just like the others. I think that this is actually an animal that lives on Mount Targo. Then there is Kinda looked like it had like stars our in it or something. Our shield is our though. conviction, our resolve, our trust in the light. So you can see that this is the shield of the Solari Shield Bearer. Mm. And the light here is showing what the description described. How the Shield Bearer was reflecting the light with it. But then finally, we get to Tiari the Traveler, the main character of these Targonian cards. As I mentioned before, here on the left and right, you can see Tiari's companions, which we have previously seen taking the gems. 
However, curiously, only Tiari is actually wearing the gems. The others are not. Perhaps that's why they won't make the climb. As an interesting mm, side note, maybe. here Tiari is trying to ascend the mountain. But it was confirmed that Tiari is actually non-binary. They don't side with either gender. Right. Which is just a fun fact that actually comes back when we get to his ascended form. Because spoilers, he actually does make it to the peak of the mountain. Then there is Bastion, nothing special here. But then there is Crescent Guardian, which is an automated Lunari protector. Stoic Guardian, the gentle touch of the full moon restores your strength. Those look Awaken epic, and save guard us from those who trespass <laughs> those upon this sacred place. A quote from Crescent Guardian's inscription. So as we can tell from the description, these guardians awake only under the full moon. Mm. Then there is Dragon's Clutch. The description doesn't mention anything Dragon's special, clutch. but should in the future we have a look at the other cards <laughs> yeah. the Argonian that came with this expansion, you'll see that these eggs appear in the Demacian cards. Then there is Fledgling Stellarcorn. Like any Fledgling, young Stellarcorns must eventually take their first flattering flight. In this, they are just like other stars in the night sky, for they fall just as readily. Luckily, we are here to catch them, and when they are ready, return them. These mm. are the words of Lidari, Keeper of the Stars. Curious. As you can see, in the background there are more Stellarcorns falling from the sky. And what this description mentioned is that these creatures fall on Runeterra, but the Vastaya, under the guidance of Soraka, help these creatures get back into the sky. Oh, and later okay. on I will show you what a fully grown okay. Stellarcorn looks like. Then there is Giddy Sparkeologist. Very similar to the one who was drawing pictures in the sky. This one somehow also feels very similar to Zoe. Which makes me wonder. Since the magic is very similar to hers, what if there are the Solari, the Lunari, but there are also these followers of the Twilight? Because all these butterflies fit Zoe as well, that's her entire thematic. Mm. So I wonder if this is the magic of Twilight. Then there is Hush, which Maybe? is literally just Soraka. And then there is Lunari Priestess. The description doesn't reveal anything new, but here I just quickly want to point out that she is in a pool of water, which is very thematic for the Lunari. They also, whoever makes these um, these images, yeah, respect to them, bro, because they always look so cool. Like, and whoever de like designs these characters, oh man, because I, I wanna say like every time I see a new character, I, I wanna just be like, damn, that looks so cool. Bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> Use oh. pools of water lit by the moonlight to reveal their own destiny, which oh. the Lunari call their orbit. And then there is the Mentor of the Stones, who is talking to none other than Tiari, who is still ascending the mountain. I'm not mm. gonna lie, this character has the best voice actor. And if you play against him, be ready to face quotes such as... Whee! Enter, traveler, and stop staring! The description says, <laughs> Did you catch anything he said in there? <laughs> not a word. Seemed nice, though. The words of Emir and Haley, which are the two companions of Tiari. Then there is the Solari Priestess, who also doesn't reveal much. Again, looks so cool. Then there is the Zenith Blade, which is specifically Leona's blade. Then there is Broadback Protector, which is just one of the Vastaya who helped the Stellar mm. What's weird is that this card was revealed together with Trundle, despite this guy not being a troll. It is definitely one of the gold Vastaya. He even has five fingers and not three. Then there is the Mountain Scryer, who is showing Tiari and his two friends some star constellations and the stories about them. Unfortunately, there are no major reveals here. Then there is Shards of the Mountain, unfortunately nothing amazing here either. But then we get to the White Flame Protector. It was the children it's of another Dark dragon, who yeah. first befriended the young, more peaceful dragons. Mm. Perhaps these juvenile creatures could sense the children's innocent curiosity, and chose, instead of causing them harm, to offer them protection. This mm. is cool, cool, because it reveals that the dragons are not just purely evil. Whenever humans are not being awful, the dragons actually don't mind them. Which and ironically, <laughs> on Targon, somehow children are the less awful ones. <laughs> and then there is fused fire. Yeah, if that's the case, oh man, humanity is fucked. Because <laughs> humans are always out here doing some fuck shit, fam. Like, all this is speaking. Brand, who is marked oh. as a dragon, but the description reveals that does not look like a dragon. challenges await those climbing Mount Targon. Some, like the Endless Ascent, slowly sap the aspirant's strength. Others are much more immediate. Here I am not exactly sure what this creature is. 
However, when Leona and Diana ascended the mountain, in their short stories, there was mention of a black creature that was oozing dark blood. We hmm. always thought that that was some kind of a void creature. But looking at this, it would make sense that there are more of these dark creatures. Either way, here at the bottom, you can see Tiari and only one of his companions. Yeah, how can you the tell that's Tiari? Is missing. But we are not sure dead. if the other one was lost during this battle, or if that happened before. Maybe you got eaten, bro. Then there is the Moon Dreamer, who has a lot of quotes with the other cards. Here I just want to mention that this dog is called Kulun, and his eye is the one that we have seen before. Oh. But more on the Moon Dreamer as we get to the Celestial. Kulun is cool. And there is Mountain I want me a Kulun. Sojourners? One of those. I have no idea how to pronounce this. Of course, here we can see Tiari at the back again, and the two of his companions. So this card is just continuing their ascent of the mountain. Mm. Then there is Ragoon, Daylight Speaker. I am pretty Bro. sure this is the leader of the Rahorak, Look which are at the that. elite warriors of the Solari. And then we finally have a grown Stellar Horn. And this mm. card describes what is happening with the Stellar Corns. See that star moving across the night sky? That's a grown Stellar Corn. While the young ones lend us their healing magic until they can be returned to the sky. Grown Stellar oh. Horns can wield that power on their own. It is considered mm. very lucky to see one, and know it for what it is. Luckier still, to care for one. Once again, the words of Lidari. That's pretty cool. So, that's what cool. is happening with the Stellar Horns is that they fall onto Runeterra so that people there can use their healing magic. Which makes me wonder if these Stellar Horns are falling onto Runeterra because of Soraka, who is trying to help mortals. Maybe that's what Soraka's Starfall is. Whenever maybe. Soraka pulls down a star, maybe it's not just a random star. Maybe it is actually a stellar core. Then there is Cygnus. Oh, that's a the curious Moonfall. theory. The description doesn't reveal anything new, so just know that this is one of Diana's special champions. Mm. But then there is Invilus Vox, Bro. one of Aurelian Soul's brothers. Bro. Which, you know, looking at the name, it makes sense. It seems like the dragons have these kinds of names. Aurelian Soul, Invilus Vox. Bro. Look to the heavens and see as I do. First the signals, for by night they shine. Then the fury, for by day all burns. You will see. We will all see. The words of the Herald of the Dragon. I'll say it again. This card mentions cool, that first bro. comes the signal and then the dragons arrive. So it is entirely possible that a dragon invasion is coming to Runeterra. Aurelian even hints at that with his quotes. But the signal is probably referring to the fire that comes from the dragons. Here you can see that Inveolus box is on fire, but if you look at the background, there are two more signaling flames there. Yeah, so perhaps not even noticed these are signaling the beginning of the invasion of dragons. Then no, if dragons invade you, fucked. I first thought that the Sun Guardian would be the person before this artifact. But then when you read the description, but then when you read the description, it becomes obvious that the Sun Guardian is the artifact. Mm. Shining Guardian, your wrath burns like noonday sun. Come forth and punish those who would trespass on this sacred place. Sun Guardian's inscription. So just like the Crescent Guardians that the Lunari have, this is the automated protector of the Solari. And the next card reveals what it can do. Here I just quickly want to mention how similar this looks to the Sun Disk of Shurima. Which makes it does look very similar. Because the Targonians saw it with the Shuriman Ascended quite a lot. Mm. So I don't think it's a coincidence that this Sun Guardian looks somewhat similar to the Crest of Shurima. I do believe that the Sun Disk was made from the same material. Then there is Grandfather Rumu. Here I just quickly want to mention that a lot of people thought that whatever this guy is, is what Jax is. Jax is also purple and he also has only three fingers. Yeah. However, so does Alistar. So I think that this guy is just a minotaur. Because Jax is not supposed to be purple. His skin is purple because he was affected by the void during the war with Ikathia. So no, this guy is not related to Jax. Oh. And then there is the infinite mind splitter. Travelers who lock eyes with the creature are said to be struck by a knowledge so profound and insight so awesome that their minds crumble beneath its gates. So yeah, unfortunately we don't get more info about this dragon. Bro, but there is no why? Doubt that looks this so is one of Aurelian's cool. brethren as well. And then there is the Arbiter Bro. of the Meek, who uh. is meeting Tiari the Traveler, as he finally ascended the mountain. Bro. The Arbiter of the Peak was first mentioned in Tariq's bio. This crystalline figure is what meets the Travelers when they finally reach the peak of Mount Stargo. And he's the one who explains what Stargon is all about. Here's the cool easter egg though. Of course the Arbiter has a lot of quotes against the other aspects. 
like Leona, Diana, and Stary. However, when he meets Zoe, he actually calls Zoe Maisha. And here's the genius thing about this. Maisha was the previous aspect of Twilight. Because, you know, now the aspect of Twilight is Zoe. But the Arbiter doesn't know that. He doesn't know that Maisha is gone. Oh. And that's because when Zoe ascended, she was handpicked by the Twilight. Zoe never actually ascended the mountain. And that's why the Arbiter had never met her. Mm. And that's why mm, that's the why Arbiter that's... thinks that Zoe is That's pretty really cool. That's a nice little Zoe thing. Because Zoe has never technically been to the peak of Mount <laughs> This is just an insanely cool detail. That is... And I have no idea how the writers even thought about this. That is, is insanely amazing. cool. Now, although that seems to be it for the Targonian cards, that's not actually true. Because the invoke mechanic of the Targonian cards makes you reveal cards that you can't collect in your deck. So, you can't see them here. For example, there is the Traveler, which is Tiari's ascended form. And here is where the non-binary thing comes in. Tiari the Traveler, as in the person, was voice acted by a man. However, the Traveler was voice acted by a female. Mm. I'm not sure who the voice actors are, but it is a really cool detail that ties into the non-binary. Mm. Yeah, anyway, yeah. we are not exactly sure what kind of <laughs> yeah. aspect the Traveler is. I assume it is the aspect of the Wanderer. Because most other Next, people would have just used one voice And actor. this is Pantheon before he was slain by Atrox. Bro. Because there's a quote that Leona has against him. She calls him Atreus. And Atreus is the current Pantheon. So this is Atreus from the past. AKA Pantheon, whose body was taken over by the aspect of war, before the aspect was slain by Atrox. Next, there is the Golden Sister and the Silver Sister. And these two are the origins of the sun and the moon. Basically, what's happening with these two oh. is that at the beginning of time, these two somehow came to existence. But they were so similar to each other that over time they tried to be better than the other. This started a little bit of a war between the two. Mm. And over time, the two just split the cycles into the day and night. So that each one of them would always have a part in the cycle when they can rule. The That's quote pretty interesting really though. Well. And from the heavens... Two beings came, one robed in silver's glow, the other clad in golden flame. Though both were formed of cosmic light, they fought, for they were two alike. And they... so these two split night from day, so each could always have their way. Mm. Their capes are pretty and cool. And there are the Celestials. As I mentioned, most of these Celestials were made by Aurelian. As Aurelian spread stars across the sky, he created star constellations. Mm. And these star constellations turned into celestial beings. Most of them are just cool creatures. But then, the cool ones come in. There are two <laughs> special celestials that we need to have a look at. There is the Scourge, which is Baron Nesher. We are not exactly sure how. It was confirmed by Riot that we know that Baron Nesher was created by the Void. Although again, it was said that, as far as we know, so maybe Aurelian knows something more. Mm. Either way, Aurelian mentions that this was his creation. Which really makes me wonder about its origins. The way I see it, as Aurelian's soul was making all the star constellations, because he fought a lot of void creatures, I think that the Scourge was inspired by Baron Nasher. Just like the Void can take physical creatures and turn them into Voidborn, I think Aurelian did the opposite. He looked at the Void creature and he crafted his own being in its reflection. Mm. On top of this, let yeah, me just tell you see a that. couple of quotes from the Moon Dreamer. Teeth sharp and swift, risen from the darkest rift. It is Lord Baron from the Void of Space. And then finally, for the last card in this deck, we have the Great Beyond. And Aurelian calls this one his magnum opus. Which means <laughs> that Aurelian made this. Mm. And I have no idea what this is. Yeah, definitely that's what I'm trying to figure out too. By the void. <laughs> Which again would make sense. Aurelian fought the Void many times before, so he knows what it looks like and how it behaves. So perhaps he had drawn a Void creature into the sky. And then, with sheer will, this creature came alive. And we know this because of the Moon Dreamer again. This means that perhaps all the Celestials who came from the Star Constellations came to be with a sheer force of will. However, we are still not sure what these creatures are. Curiously though, Aurelian is not going to use these against the Void. He is very specifically mentioning using these against the Dargonians. Oh. 
<laughs> the fuck for the cards. <laughs> if you'd like me to talk about the cinematic, no. let me know, because I'm not sure if there is much that I could explain there, but I'm definitely willing to do it. Other than that, I'm now going to go and check the other cards from the other regions, because there is a lot of good stuff there too. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Alright, alright, alright. <sighs> Great video as always, honestly. I always like to get this, these little tidbits of information and like these overarching like storylines and stuff like that because they're always pretty cool. And like I said in the video, like the artwork, yo, whoever makes the artwork, bro, god damn, whoever designs the characters, A1 fam, A1. Because like I say, I think I already said this, so now I'm just repeating. Um, <laughs> I wanted to just keep saying like, for every character that popped out, I just want to be like, yo, that just looks so cool. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it gets to a point where you're like, okay, I've said this enough. I've said this enough. But, yeah, it's just the fact. They're cool. And the storylines are also very, very good. Like, you can see that the the writers actually do put in a lot of thought in the, like, the the storylines and stuff like that. With, you know, how, like, some things come back to, you know come back around to, you know, connect with something that they already showed, like, way back. You know, um, which is really cool, actually, which is pretty cool. That's when you know that, you know, something is probably very good. Probably. Because you never know. <laughs> but, yeah. Other than that, I don't think I have much else to say. Um, I enjoyed the video. That's it. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. If you did, please leave a like, sub to the channel, and leave a comment down below telling me what your thoughts were on this video. And, yeah, later.